Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 4 in this series on developing a survival game. In this video, we'll be making our sprint system. This series has been brought to you by Patreon sponsors like Random Number Generator. That said, fire up your project, and let's get started. Hi everyone and welcome back to the editor. In this video we will be setting up our sprint system. So we're going to jump straight into it by going to our survival game, our core, our character, and into the character itself. And for our sprint system, as I mentioned in the video, prep video that is, we'll be violating a bit of our OOP. And that's fine. Actually, we skipped a step. We're going to first go into our settings, and then I'll get back to the violation of OOP stuff. And we're going to open our project settings up, and we're going to go into our input. And here in our input, we are going to create two new action mappings. I'm just going to minimize these because we, we're actually done with this for a while. We're going to go straight into our action mappings, and we are going to add two new ones. The first one will be sprint. The second one will be always sprinting. For our sprint, we're going to have two inputs, one for the keyboard and mouse, one for our gamepad. And the keyboard and mouse will be left shift. For our gamepad, it will be gamepad thumb, or sorry, left thumb stick button. And the reason for that, actually I'm going to open the access mapping back up, is that's the stick we use to move. The Y is the left stick. So if we press down and push forward, we are sprinting and moving forwards. As for always sprinting, we're not going to have one for the controller, because mostly it's one button to move and sprint at the same time. We don't need to have two separate things. I mean, if you can think of one you want to include, hey, let me know in the comments below. But for now, we're just going to have one for keyboard and mouse, which will be caps lock. All right. Let's take care of these. Again, remember this auto saves, so I can just close it. Now back in our player character, we are going to find our action events that we just created. So we're going to for sprint, and we have sprint and always sprinting. And with sprint, again, there are other ways to do it than what we're going to do in terms of good OLP. But we are going to first set a Boolean variable called B is sprinting and I just want to make sure that sets to false so I'm going to put that in my bulls category we're going to plug that into there we're going to mark this as true on pressed and then let's go to our character movement and we have movement settings we're going to base everything here off this max walk speed of 600 so we're going to come in we're going to take this we're going to get it and we are going to set max walk speed and we're going to set this to a value of 1200 all right let's plug that into there now there might be a little bit of a problem here already if you think about some things we've done you think about good encapsulation oop principles and also just being well working smart not hard there's something a bit off here let's see if you, you can work out what that might be we're going to create, duplicate these nodes down here. We're going to plug this into the released. And we're going to set this, if I can plug it into the release, that would be lovely. We're going to set this to false. And that's not what I meant to do. That's also not what I meant to do. Uh, that's what I meant to do. And we're going to set this back to 600. OK, let's just test this out real quick. I'm going to hit play. I'm walking, I'm not holding the shift down sprinting you can see i'm moving much more rapidly now all right there we go our sprint events are set up and just to make our lives a bit easier we're going to collapse this down to a function called set is sprinting and set is sprinting will go into our controller movement folder and we're going to then take this one Collapse this one down to a function, and this is our set 
is walking. Again, we're violating some OOP here, but that's not the major issue. All right, let's just line those up to that. Actually, I know we're gonna come back in a later video in the next section. Actually, in the actually in the, later in this section, and we're gonna add some stuff in here. Which is why I'm not commenting this out because we're not done with this code yet. Let's then right click and do our always sprinting. We are done with it for this video though. Well, except for that one thing that I said might be a bit problematic, and take a think about it that I haven't gone in those in there and put my um, return nodes. So I was gonna say end nodes, and that's not the word I'm looking for. So what we're going to do on this one is we're going to use a flip-flop. And as I described in the prep video, a flip-flop works that the first time this triggers, it goes through A. The second time this node triggers, it goes through B. It doesn't matter what triggers this. I mean, I can take this and plug down there. And if this triggers it, the first time this gets triggered, it goes through A. So this triggered it the first time. If this gets triggered the second time by this, it goes through B. It does not matter what activates this node. Bear that in mind for when we get to our stamina system. Now I'm gonna create another bool variable. I'm just gonna duplicate this for a sprinting one called B is always sprinting. Now why do we have a sprinting versus always sprinting? Well, simply put, because it's gonna make something we're gonna do with our stamina system a tiny bit easier. That's it, that's all it's really there for. And we're gonna set this to be true. And we're gonna set this to be false. Now, we could just plug into there. And if we go into this once, well, A is now true, that's true. If we go into this the second time, it's now B, and that's now false. There's your hint for that challenge I gave in the prep video. And it's gonna relate to how you'd actually set these up instead. Also, instead of what we've done in here, again, you can use a select node. I'm gonna just open these up because I know we're gonna come back in here in a moment. I'm gonna take these nodes and I'm going to plug them into here. Now, let's test out our always sprinting and hopefully you'll, you'll start to see what can go wrong here. So shift key held down, shift key released, caps lock, caps lock the second time. I think 600 is a bit too fast for a walk speed. Let's set this at 300. Let's hit play. So there's my walk speed at 300. I'm, I'm crawling along at a nice little walking speed. Kind of looks like he's power walking. Hold my shift key down. Well, at least my shift key. Whoa, wait. Why am I not walking again? Why am I going at this speed? Okay, clearly I knew what was going to happen there. And what I'm illustrating here is the fact we've set this to 300. Our set is walking. That's what we hit when we release our shift key or hit caps lock the second time. Reverts it back to 600. Now in reality, I am going to leave my max walk speed at 600. So there's a better way to do this. What we are going to do is we are going to set some values. And I'm just gonna pull off of here and I'm gonna call this my sprint speed. And I'm going to set my sprint speed in a folder called controller movement or category. I'm just gonna tuck this under here and I'm gonna put my reroute in. Reroute, return node. I'm just gonna control S, save that. And I'm gonna do the same for my walk, but I'm gonna give it a different name. And this name is very, very intentional by the way. I'm going to promote to variable and it's default walk speed. All right. And trust me, you want to call this default because of what we're going to be doing later on with other walk speeds. And I'm going to put a return node in there. Well, now when I change this to 300, I'm going to move it back to 300. There's our nice little weird power walk. I hold shift down, I go into my sprint, I release shift, and I'm back in, okay. Oh, yeah. That's also not the correct value. I had to set that to 300 if I want to really go to 300. Well, I did not mean to go to viewport. I'm gonna set my default max walk speed back to 600, and I'm gonna show you a way to set this up that saves us some time. So I'm gonna create a new function 
And for once, I'm actually gonna create the function in, in oh, sorry, let me put this on category first. So our default walk speed will go into our movement. All right, that makes life a little bit easier. I'm gonna create a new function, and for the first time, per what I was saying, I'm gonna do it this way. And this will be our set movement speed. Now, my logic is my sprint speed will be double my run speed. That's it, that's all my logic is. So what I'm going to do is I am going to set my default speed, walk speed first. I'm gonna set it, you heard me correctly, and you see me. I am going to get my character movement speed and we're going to inherit from it, it's max walk speed. I'm just plug that directly into there, that's all. And I'm gonna put a reroute in here. And whatever this value is, my sprint, I want to be double it, so I'm gonna do float times float. Multiply it by two, double it. And I'm gonna set this to my sprint speed. So I'm gonna take the return and set it there. And again, because I actually might set it so that we can mess with the sprint speed, I'm also gonna call this my, promote this to a variable again and call it my default sprint speed. And this is just gonna go into my category of movement again. And I'm gonna put a return node in. Now, I am going to kind of violate, you know, these are all in movement. I'm gonna put this function somewhere else. And this function is gonna go into my master because it's just storing our settings. The player really should have no access to these variables. All right, now where do we call this? Well, we're gonna call this on the event begin play, which means I'm gonna take all these nodes and I'm just gonna move them down slightly. Because I know on our event begin play, we're gonna have a lot coming off of here. Well, not a lot, but first I'm gonna pull off of here and I am going to do a sequence. Now, just as a quick caveat, something you know about a sequence. These go off in order, so I add more pins. You know, one, zero goes off, then one, then two, then three. What you need to know about that is really, really important. Zero starts, one then starts, two then starts. The key words here are the words start. A lot of people think in a sequence node that it goes zero, runs all the way through, then one fires, then two. If I put a delay here, let me just demonstrate this really quickly as proof. I'm gonna put a delay of 50 seconds. I'm gonna put a print string. This is just gonna say then two. This will display for 20, or two, let's just make this 10 seconds. And then we're gonna do a print string here of then zero. So if this fires off and has to go through before two or before the then one starts, we'll have no print strings on the screen for over 50 seconds. Or just over, like a tick over. If however, what I said is right, I know it is by the way. This is gonna fire, this delay will start, and as this delay starts, the then one fires as well. These fire in parallel, really. So, as evidence of this, then two. And if you want further proof of it, see the then two up there? Sorry for the little shift F1 thing. There it goes, we go here, we can see this delay is still firing. We're 30 seconds into, or 20 some seconds into it. 20 about now. So just bear that in mind. Uh, that's all you really need to know. And by the way, I am gonna have three execute pins. So that's why I left the then two in. I am going to get my set movement speeds and I'm gonna do that first. There we go. We will set our movement speeds and then we'll get our controller. So if I hit play, there we are sprinting running and to be extra fun with this let's just change our movement speed to 300. there is our weird power walk and now we're at our old default walk speed back to our power walk let's set this to 1200. <laughs> i'm not looking forward to the sprint so there is our walk speed cyberpunk ask eh and now we're sprinting. Whee! All right, I had a little too much fun doing that. 
But that, by the way, I'm sending that back to 600. That takes us through what we need to do for the series. Please, a series, this video. Please remember the challenges I've given you around, well, making this polymorphic. I've shown you one way to how to start setting up this is a thing in relation to our bools. The next thing you'll need to take care of is what's going on in here. And I'll give you a hint. You're going to want to pass something out or use a select node. It will make life easier. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below. It really does help this channel out. It lets me know that I'm bringing you content that you enjoy. It also lets me know, well, sorry, it also helps the algorithm for YouTube and gets this channel out to people who might not know it exists. In addition, if you want to be here when we work on our stamina, health, and our hunger systems, as well as the UMG widgets for it, then make sure to hit that subscribe and notify icon. If you don't hit that notify bell, YouTube may not tell you about this series. And if you want to help support this channel, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporters at upper tiers will get instant access to the project files for any YouTube series I am currently doing and still have copies of. And at lower tiers, Patreon supporters will get access when the series has completed on YouTube. This series has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors like Haynes, Quadmenson, and Rian. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.